Hello and welcome to Tradecraft Security Weekly, episode number three. I'm your host, Bo Bullock, and this week I'm going to be talking about attacking Exchange and OWA to gain access to Active Directory accounts. Um, so jumping right in, you know, pretty much every organization who hosts email for their for their their employees uses either Exchange or Office 365. They're just they're their most popular platforms out there for email. Um, and the thing with 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 regards to an, a remote attacker and why they're enticing is typically. A, they're remotely accessible, meaning that most of the time, um, if they're using um, Exchange, they're hosting like an OWA portal remotely accessible for their employees to access remotely. Um, and they're typically tied to Active Directory infrastructure. So, uh, you know, if if we can attack a remote endpoint to the point that we can gain access to the credentials even of a user um, from, a, from an Active Directory domain, a lot of times we could then take that uh, to like a VPN portal and try it there. If they're not using two-factor authentication to allow uh, to, to allow users to VPN in, we might be able to just straight up VPN in after grabbing a credential. Um, or you know, if we are doing a physical assessment, maybe we could just take that credential with us to the site and then just you know walk up and log in. Um, so they both of these Exchange and Office 365 are very enticing for external attackers um, because they're they're just out there and there's plenty of things, plenty of fun things to do that I'm going to talk about here. So. Um, to be successful um, when it comes to compromising um, accounts via exchange attacks, first and foremost, recon is the most important thing. Um, so discovering the username schema uh, for an organization tends to be one of the more complicated issues. And the reason is because if, if an organization uses randomized usernames and they don't use like a standard username schema, a lot of times you can't just like, you know, magically create that list. Uh, so in Tradecraft Security Weekly episode one, I detailed one of the methods that we use pretty often, and that is to find uh, usernames and publicly available files and the metadata of those files. Uh, so if you want to uh, learn how to extract metadata from publicly available files, check out Trade Tradecraft Security Weekly episode one. Um, so once we kind of understand what the username schema is in an organization, a lot of times we can craft more usernames based off of um, you know valid employee names that we know are at the organization from something like LinkedIn, or we can create a list of the most popular names. So we don't even have to have like valid employee names. Like let's say we know there's ten people at the company, um, and we only have five of those names. We could craft a list of you know a, a thousand most common names and potentially end up with a couple more of that that total of ten uh, valid employee name list. So um, once we kind of you know gather our potential usernames, uh, the next thing we kind of have to do is we have to find where the mail server is, which most organizations is not that hard. You typically can just find it at like mail.domain.com, um, or you can you know utilize uh, Exchange's auto discover functionality to find it. Um, and then you know the the cool thing about Exchange uh, for for an attacker's point of view anyway is like. If if they're if if the organization hasn't set up UPNs to uh, allow users to log in via an email address, um, if they're if they're you know keeping it to the Active Directory login, meaning like domain slash username for login, a lot of times we still have to figure out that internal domain um, because you know if, if they're not using the fully qualified domain name that's part of like the website infrastructure um, that's extra externally exposed, a lot of times it takes you know some time to figure out like okay, well what's this internal domain? It might not be the same thing, um, so. Uh, Exchange has a few things that allow us to figure that out. Um, and the same thing goes for username enumeration as well. So against an OWA portal, we can you know, send a list of usernames uh, and potentially figure out which ones are actually valid at the organization. Um, and I'm going to demo all this in just a moment. So uh, you know, after we know some valid usernames, valid domain, we can we can perform password spraying attacks, which is one of my favorite attacks. Uh, it's it's been greatly successful in pretty much any external assessment that I've done um, that where the organization has an externally facing OWA portal. Um, so password spraying is where we take one password and try it against all of the usernames. So we're not brute forcing, and we're not going to try to like lock out anybody because the uh, you know exchange portals typically still abide by the internal domain's password policies. So if their internal domain says, you know, five lockout attempts, uh, or five, five login attempts and then lock out in 30 minutes, if you try six and 10, you're gonna lock out some accounts. So be very, very careful when it comes to password spraying. And then finally, after we do gain access to a, a credential, which through password spraying, we commonly do with a password that is, you know, like spring 2017, you know, season year is a very common thing for an employee to use. Um, once we do gain access to a credential, for a user, we can then grab the global address list from Exchange. So let's say we only we only had a list of um, 100 
uh, usernames to start out with, but there's 10,000 employees of the organization. Once we grab that, that first credential of one of those 100, we can now go and grab the global address list and now we have that, that 10,000 username global address list. And now we can go do more password spraying against those accounts and gain access to more, um, more and more, more and more details and more and more access to the network. Uh, so you know, um, after you gain some, after you gain some creds, then there's a lot of other steps that, that can go after that as well, um, which we'll talk more about those in other episodes. So let me let me jump right into what I'm going to demo here. So I'm going to demo a tool that I wrote called Mail Sniper. Specifically, I'm going to demo four modules of it. I'm going to demo the uh, the domain harvest, the username harvest, the password spraying, and the global address list module. So um, Mail Sniper demo. Here we go. Okay, so I've got my Windows desktop here. Let me go ahead and run PowerShell. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna import the Mail Sniper module. And first and foremost, um, I'm gonna show you that I've, I've generated a couple lists here. Um, first, I'm gonna show you that I, I've generated a list of potential domain names for an internal domain. So, uh, you know, when it comes to like figuring out an internal domain, you, you kind of still generally need to understand what it might be, right? Like in a lot of organizations you use something like Corp or, or Biz um, or just the, the name of the company. So you, you craft this list. And then one of the modules we have uh, in Mail Sniper is the Invoke Domain Harvest module. So Domain Harvest, and we're gonna give it the exchange host name of our uh, our mail server that we're attacking, which is at deathstar-mail.corp.empire.com. Um, and then we're gonna give it a domain list, which is our domain list file, which I have in ctemp. And then we're gonna out that file to potential domain names. And now what's gonna happen is it's gonna tr try to craft a baseline response of uh, what, an, what a login attempt takes to that OWA portal. Um, so you can see like the general responses for invalid requests are around like 11, 12 milliseconds. And now it's gonna go through each of those domain names and try the same thing. And if the response time is greatly different, which this hit right here is, it's at 609 milliseconds, then we have a potentially valid domain name. So just those slight little subtle differences in the, in the actual response time from a login request to uh, the, the OWA portal that's externally exposed has actually revealed the internal domain name for the organization. So now that we have the internal domain name, let's actually look at some usernames. So I've, I've actually gone in here and added like a bunch of fake ones too. So like, you know, not a user, not a real user, that kind of stuff. So the next thing we would try is the invoke uh, username and uh, harvest OWA module. And what we can use is, uh, or what we can do here is point it again at the deathstar-mail.corp.empire.com. Give it a user list this time of C colon temp. We give it our user list.txt. Um, and then we have to give it a domain of um, empire because we've kind of discovered here that that appears to be the internal domain. Um, and then lastly, um, that's it, we can run it. So let's go ahead and run invoke username harvest OA. Oh, we can out it to a file too. So let me out that to just test.txt for now. So um, now we're gonna go ahead and try to discover the valid usernames of the organization. Same thing as, as the last module, it crafts response times. It's actually opposite for usernames though. Um, so like the smaller, the, the, the time it takes, or the shorter the time it takes, it, it will actually um, show a valid username. Meaning like, so like the longer attempt, so like 608 milliseconds, that's not, that's not a real user, it's, it's not gonna come back as, as being valid. Um, but these really short attempts, they are in fact valid users. So we've got our, our now, um, our user list of potential users here. So, um, you know, after we've kind of established now that we know some valid usernames, Let's go ahead and do some password spraying. So let's password spray OA. Um, and we're gonna give it the exchange host name of the same thing, deathstar-mail.corp.empire.com. We're gonna give it the domain of empire. We're gonna give it a user list of c colon slash temp slash user list. 
And we're gonna try the password of, let's try spring 2017. So now what this is gonna do is it's gonna try to log into each of those, those um, each, each of those accounts, uh, OA uh, mailboxes using a password of spring 2017. So um, it will go ahead and start up a few threads. Uh, by default, it starts up five threads. You can change that option as well. Um, and it will start trying to log in. And you can see we have three valid credentials that came back from password spring with those users. So we've got success with spring 2017. Now, lastly, now that we have a valid account, let's go grab the full global address list. In order to do that, let's do git dash global address list, exchange host name. We're gonna give it the death star dash mail dot corp dot empire dot com again. And now we have to give it the credential for a valid user that we know. Um, in this case, we know empire slash, uh, let's say TK421 and give him a password of spring 2017. And let's go ahead and out that, uh, out, the, out the global address list to a file called gal.txt. And again, look out, like when it logs into OA, it, like to get the, the gal from OA, it's super fast. So like you can see, like we've already got the 30 email addresses that were part of the global address list here. So, um, you know, now, like I said, you could take that list and go back and start password spraying some more um, and, you know, gain access to more accounts. So, like I said, um, you know, attacking Exchange Nova is a lot of fun and there's a lot of other things you can do as well that will be demoed in other episodes because that's the end of this episode of Tradecraft Security Weekly. Thank you so much for watching. Um, you know, one last note for the blue team here, you know, locking down any exchange services like Exchange Web Services, which I didn't actually show hitting in this episode, um, but a lot of these same same attacks you can do against Exchange Web Services um, or Mappy over HTTP um, that are not needed. If you, if you don't need them for business, lock them down. Um, if you can install two-factor software on all of those endpoints, that'd be great. But you know, in research, we've found that a lot of the two-factor um, softwares will only cover like certain areas. So for example, they'll cover like the OWA portal, but Exchange Web Services, which is right next to it on the same server is not typically covered. And then lastly, alerting on password spring is critical. Um, you know, identifying any sort of uh, spring that's at, at, at being attempted against either your online um, Office 365 portal or your uh, OWA portal or EWS, um, and then identifying any compromised users uh, from that and then immediately changing their passwords would be awesome. Um, you can find me on Twitter, I'm at DAFTAC. Have a great day, thanks for watching.